Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It's our 800th day together in the Word of God, day 800. We're back in the New Testament today in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please bless us through your Word today. Speak to our hearts. Help us to know you, to love you, and to follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And so we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Now we commend you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the traditions that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command, if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him, that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Now, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. This is the sign of genuineness in every letter of mine. It is the way I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Well, this is Paul's, uh, the end of his second letter to the Thessalonians, where the major theme between the two letters has been sort of misunderstandings about the second coming of Jesus, about the day of the Lord. And he's been clarifying that that day cannot be predicted. It will come suddenly. Uh, there's going to be a man of lawlessness who's going to come first and who's going to deceive people and set himself up as God, but that the Lord Jesus himself will descend with a cry of command and a shout of uh, the blast of the trumpet of God, and he will, all the dead will be raised, and all of those of us who are alive will be caught up together with him in the clouds as he comes to judge the earth. So that's all going to happen. Some people have been saying that this had already happened. In the last chapter we saw there was a letter, apparently a fake letter, saying from the Apostle Paul that Jesus had already come. That's why at the end of this letter, Paul says, I'm writing this with my own hand. And this is the way I sign all of my letters, okay? So I, this is one of those where I really wish we had the original handwritten by Paul manuscript, but we don't. Um, we don't have any original manuscripts in the ancient world because they're all dust, because that's what happens to things over time, unless they're like hermetically sealed and buried in the ground or something like that. So like the Dead Sea Scrolls. But most, all manuscripts, no matter what kind they are uh, from the ancient world, almost all of them, 99.9999% are dust. So we have copies, but we know that in the original, obviously we know in the original that Paul actually wrote at least the, the, uh, the, the conclusion with his own hand. Um, and he probably wrote very large because we have some evidence from his letters that Paul's eyesight was failing and that he could no longer, you know, he, he, he was increasingly reliant on other people to write the letters for him like these were written by Paul, Silas, and Timothy. So one of those actually was the scribe and um, they worked together to craft the letter. But to sign his letters to show the authenticity, he wrote the last part himself 
and it would, would have been probably in very big letters, we think. But the, so that's one thing that was being said was that Jesus had already come again. The other thing that was being said as a false teaching was that maybe because he's coming again any day now, you should just quit working. Just be idle. And if you're idle, what are you going to do? Well, if you're not busy at work, you're going to be a busy body. That's what we learned from this chapter. If you're not busy doing what God's called you to do, you're going to be busy doing something else. The old saying, idle hands are the devil's workshop. If you're not busy doing what God's called you to do, you're going to be busy doing something else. In this case, gossiping, slandering, busybodies. And so this final chapter is really focused on what they need to be doing. Be dedicated to prayer and be working hard. Prayer and work. Oro et laboro is the old saying of sort of the, the good medieval monasteries. I pray and I work. Oro et laboro. A prayer and work. That's what we're called to be about in the Christian life. We should be praying. What should we be praying for? Should we be praying for sick people to be made well, for poor people to be made rich, for unhappy people to be made happy? Maybe in some circumstances we can pray about those things, but that's not the primary focus of prayer in Paul's letters or in the scripture. We should be praying for the gospel to advance, that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored, right? And that God's faithful ministers will be delivered from evil and that God's church will be established and guarded. So three things you can pray for to be faithful in your prayer. One, pray that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored wherever it's going forth. How about praying for the Republic of Sudan, for Haiti, for South Sudan, these are where we have missionaries on the campus of Johns Hopkins University among international students. This is where we have missionaries as a church that we're supporting. Pray for them. Pray that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored. Then pray for those who are faithful in ministry to be protected, to be delivered, because the gospel, wherever it's going forward, is also being opposed. So pray for our missionaries and evangelists and pastors and teachers that they would be delivered. And third, pray that the church of Jesus Christ at Forest Hill, or if you go to a different church, your local faithful church, would be established and guarded. And God will answer those kinds of prayers because that's how he's taught us to pray. So we need to be praying. We need to be praying and we need to be working. Don't be idle. Don't be lazy. Churches should be taking care of people who are in need, but not if those people are capable of working. They should work and they should earn their living with their own hands so that they can have money to share with those who are in need. So Paul had rules in other letters. He talks about a, lit a widow's list and only put the widows on it who are widows indeed, who are more than 60 years old and who were faithful to their husbands and who have no family to support them. So there's very sort of tight restrictions, controls on who the church should support financially. And that is those people who really cannot support themselves or cannot be supported by immediate family members. Those people the church ought to be supporting, but not people who are just lazy, who are just not willing to work. Those people need to not walk in idleness. They need to be busy at work. Do not grow weary in doing good. And there's also a word here about church discipline. We get words about church discipline in First and Second Thess uh, Corinthians and here in Second Thessalonians. Those who ignore, those who scoff at what the Word of God says, they need to be sort of put out of the fellowship, not as an enemy, but as a brother to be warned, to say, you cannot disregard the word of God and be at peace with God's people. But God wants us to be at peace. And so that's the closing word. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. We don't get peace if we scoff at and ignore the word of God. But if we will pray and work and strive to be faithful, the Lord of peace will give us peace and will be with us. And I love that Paul almost always ends his letters with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we need for everything we do as Christians. Every day of our lives, we need the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
We can't do it on our own. We can't just pray harder and work harder and suck it up, buttercup, and buckle down and pull yourselves up by your bootstraps and just give it the old gung-ho. Like, we can't, okay? We don't have it within us. But Jesus, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ working in us, we cooperate with that grace as we pray and as we work and as he strengthens us and as the Lord of peace himself gives us peace at all times in every way, we are fruitful and productive. So it's not just do it, but it's just let Christ do it through you. Not let go and let God, but let the grace of God strengthen you and walk in the power of that grace. So pray hard and faithfully, work hard and faithfully, and walk in humble obedience and complete dependence upon the grace of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, would you please advance your gospel in the Republic of Sudan, where there is a civil war tearing the country apart, would your gospel advance by the power of your Holy Spirit and the faithful witness of your people across South Sudan, which has still been plagued by civil war and tribalism? May your gospel advance and Christ be glorified among tribes in Uganda who do not know you, like the Oringa. Would your gospel advance and would people come to know you in Haiti? where gang violence is plaguing that country with unrest, would your gospel advance on the campus of Johns Hopkins University among international students? Would your gospel advance? And elsewhere in the world, wherever men and women are faithfully serving you, wherever your gospel is being proclaimed, would you protect from the enemy's attacks? And would you strengthen and establish your church at Forest Hill? And everywhere around the world where your word is preached, where your gospel is proclaimed, where Jesus is exalted, would you establish us in every good word and work? Establish the work of our hands. Help us to be faithful. Give us peace and give us grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for Second Thessalonians 3. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. We're going to be back in the book of Job for Job 13. And I do hope you have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.